please remain standing until the guard exits the field. Thank you. Are you hearing me right now? All right. Where Where do you think I? Because if I If I get around a bunch of fans, won't they drown me out? Do you want me to let You want me to test it down on the field? Let me try to Let me try to get dead center with you. How is it right here? Good, bad. I can try to keep it held so-so. So you think I'd be better here? Shenandoah has won 
toss, but they have deferred for the second half. Can you hear anything at all now? All right, let me try something else. How about if I'm roaming right here? Is it any better right in here? That's better. Testing one, two, three. I just feel like if I get right up here, I'll get drowned out. So is this better here? All right, I'm gonna try it right in here. Right in here, real good. Okay. All right, you can go on and bring me on if you're ready. Tell me. All right, we'll go three, two, one. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to some college football action here. We are on the campus of North Carolina Wesleyan College for a afternoon matchup, a high noon matchup between the battling bishops of North Carolina Wesleyan and the visiting Shenandoah University Hornets. Beautiful afternoon here on the campus of North Carolina Wesleyan College. Now we are set for the opening kickoff. The Hornets won the opening toss and deferred to the second half. And they will use the kickoff and prepare to receive the opening kickoff here. And the kick is up. And we are underway here at Battling Bishop Stadium. The ball is received by Sean Washington. He gets the kick near the 20 yard line where Westland will set up their first offensive drive of the day. Beautiful afternoon here, sunny skies. They will be at the 29-yard line. Quarterback Storm Yarbrough is in. He gets a high snap, and the ball is handed off. Going to go to number 26, Jeff Black. Look to get some initial running room up the middle, and he was forced to the right side. He's going to pick up uh, about seven or eight yards on the play. Actually, looks like they're going to give him a first down. The officials were a little confused on the play there, but they went ahead and marked it as a first down. Storm Yarbrough, the quarterback for Westland, he is a sophomore from Gainesville, Georgia. They hand off once again to Jeff Black. He is a senior running back from Atlanta, Georgia. Black gains about two yards on the play. Bring up second and six for the Bishops now. They give him about four yards. Second and four at the 40. As they look to move here on their opening possession, another high snap, another handoff to Black. He's over to the left side, and he's going to gain about seven yards. 
crosses midfield. It'll be to the 48-yard line, and that's going to be good for Bishop first down. Bishop's looking to establish an early attack here. So far, every one of their plays has been on the ground. I've yet to go to the air yet. So far, Black has done a great job of moving the football. Another snap. This time, Yarbrough keeps it. He throws across the middle. The pass is complete. Down to the 30-yard line. Dylan Wright, the tight end on the reception. The ball will be placed at the 30-yard line. It'll be good for another Bishop first down. Great route by Dylan Wright there. Right across the middle of the field. Yarbrough doesn't like what he sees at the line of scrimmage, goes to try to adjust things, and I believe we had someone jump, a little false start there. Good job there by Dylan Wright. He is a freshman tight end from Las Vegas, Nevada. He that's quite often is a hard spot for a tight end to get position out there in the center of the field. He was able to break over to the left and get good room and credit to Yarborough for finding him. Yarborough now will line up in the shotgun. He's got one back to his right, three, re three receivers out to his right. Yarborough in the shotgun. He's flushed out to midfield, pushed to the right side, and Yarborough will cut it loose, throw deep for the end zone. That is complete. They are waiting for a signal. The Bishops are saying touchdown. They're saying touchdown, but the Bishops are saying an incomplete pass. Kevin Alford was there on the reception, and he must have come down out of bounds. The Bishops were looking for that touchdown call, and the, after the officials conferred, they determined he did not come down in bounds, so they're going to call it incomplete, second and 15. Great job there by Yarborough. As he was flushed to the right side, and good job finding Alford just – didn't quite stay in bounds. Yarborough in the shotgun. He'll pitch it this time over to the right side. Number 28, Jalen Perry on the carry. Not much going there for the Bishops. And it'll bring up third and 14 now for Wesleyan. We'll see how the Hornets respond to the extra chance here. I think the Wesleyan fans must have known that he had come down out of bounds because there wasn't much argument or much moaning on the sidelines or in the stands here. Yarbrough will line up in the shotgun facing third and 14. Number nine in motion, the snap to Yarbrough. He's back, he's looking across the middle, over towards the right side, near the end zone, and it is complete. This time we have a touchdown. Trey Blackwell on the 33-yard touchdown reception on third and long. And the Bishop on the score here early on their opening possession with 11.47 to go in the first quarter. Great job by Yarborough there and a great job also by the offensive line. Gave him plenty of time to space out and look downfield. He was looking in several directions but was able to find his receiver and the extra point attempt is good and with 11:47 remaining in the first quarter Wesleyan 7 Shenandoah 0 we will step aside for our first break here on the Taylor Financial Strategies game of the week here at North Carolina Wesleyan College be right back after this break All 
All right, you ready? Three, two, one. And welcome back to our coverage of North Carolina Wesleyan football. 11.47 remaining in the first quarter. The Bishops score on their opening drive and now kick off to the Hornets. Ball will be returned just short of the 30-yard line where the Hornets will take over on their first possession of the afternoon. And we will see if the Hornets can respond to Wesley's opening touchdown drive. Quarterback keeper by number five, Steve Hughes. And he will keep the ball flushed out to the right side. He's going to gain exactly 10 yards on the quarterback keeper, and it will move the chains for the Hornets. Stephen Hugney is the quarterback for the Hornets. Hugney lines up in the shotgun with two backs and three receivers to his left. He looks deep across the middle of the field. His receiver was tripped up looking for Brent Butler, but he was tripped and the Hornets are looking for a flag on the play. Bigby and Butler were in the vicinity of the football. Not quite sure if Butler tripped over his own feet or one of the corners. Ben Williams was in on the coverage for the Bishops. Ball is pitched to Caleb Reedy. And Reedy will be to midfield for the Hornets. Good recognition there by Hugney. On a well-designed play, pitched the ball straight to Reedy. Reedy was able to find the hole, find some running room on the left side. And picked up another first down for the Hornets at midfield. Hugney in the shotgun. The ball is pitched to number three, Ether Bigby. Good job by the Bishop defense to snuff that play out, and he will struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. Bigby was out on the left side in the receiver slot and came across and took the handoff, but good job by the Bishop defense to be ready. Hugney in the shotgun again. He looks out to his right, and the pass is complete to number two, Caleb Reedy. A short route. Gains six yards on the play. We'll give it five yards on the play. Third and five now for the Hornets as they look to match the opening touchdown drive of the Bishops. Hugney remains in the shotgun with two receivers to his left and two to his right. Snap and Hugney on the keeper. He found an initial hole but was brought down by the Bishop defense. I don't believe he's going to have enough for the first down. He picks up four. And they're going to call it fourth and inches now. And we will see what the call is for the Hornets. On fourth and short here as an early decision here. 9-19 remaining in the first quarter of play with the Bishops up early 7 to nothing. They're actually going to bring the chains out to measure it and see if Hugney was able to get enough for the first down. And it appears... He is going to be short. So it will bring up fourth and inches and an early decision here for the Hornets on whether or not to go for this or to punt it. And it appears that they are going to go for it. 
as Hugney leaves his offense out on the field. He's got one back to his right. He remains the shotgun. Thirteen seconds left on the play clock. There's a chance Hugney's trying to draw the Bishops offside. He receives the snap and ball is handed off to number 22, Rashadin Bird. And Bird gains 11 yards and is 20 for the Hornet first down. Good patience there. As you can see, Hugney trying to draw the Bishops offside. They remain disciplined, but they snapped it in time to get it to Bird for the long gain and continue the drive. Hugney on the keeper to the left side. He is brought down by number five on the Westland defense. Hugney's able to gain four yards on the play, and we'll call it second and five, we'll say. At the 25-yard line, Hugney remains in the shotgun. Hugney looks to his left, and the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Number 48, Charles Fias, was able to get his hand in there and disrupt Hugney's pass attempt. And that'll bring up third and five with 8 and in the quarter. Answer Weston's opening drive. Hugney in the shotgun. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Hugney on the pitch to number 22, Bird. And Bird gains a few yards on the play. We will see where he is marked. R.J. Cottle on the tackle for the Bishops. Bird gains four yards on the play, and for the second consecutive possession, the Hornets will face fourth and inches at the 21-yard line this time, and they will go for it again. Hugney remains in the shotgun position, takes a snap, ball's handed off to Bird. Bird is going to find enough running room to gain three yards and be good for another Hornet first down. Second straight possession for the Hornets facing fourth and inches. They were able to complete both first down opportunities. Hugney remains in the shotgun. He's yet to line up directly under center, takes the snap. Fakes the handoff to Bird and keeps it running out to his left. Hugney's going to gain some more positive yards on the left side. Williams in on the tackle for the Bishops. Hugney's done a great job early in this game of using his athleticism to find the creases. He gained six yards on that play in a second and four now with 625 remaining in the first quarter. Hugney remaining in the shotgun with three receivers to his right, one to his left. Hugney receives a snap, looks left, pump fakes and unloads. Deep in the end zone, the pass is complete in the corner of the end zone. Brett Butler on the touchdown reception. Great job by Hugney there to immediately look to his left and threw it right into the left corner of the end zone. Butler was able to go up with a corner of Wesleyan draped all over his back and was able to haul in the pass in the left part of the end zone. The extra point attempt is up and it is good. And the Hornets match the Bishops opening touchdown possession with a touchdown of their own and with 6-11 remaining in the first quarter. Your score, Bishops 7, Hornets 7. We'll take a break and be right back.
Two, one. Welcome back to the class of North Carolina Wesleyan College. Six eleven remaining in the first quarter. Sean Washington on the return for the Bishops. So both offenses have looked good here early. As they both scored on their opening possession. Two very good offenses here this evening, so we may be in for a high scoring affair here. Yarbrough back in the shotgun at quarterback. He's forced out to his right, looking deep down the field, and the ball is intercepted. It was intended for Sean Washington and number 30 for the Hornets steps right in front of the route and easily intercepts the pass by Yarborough. And our first defensive stand of the afternoon goes in favor of the Hornets. Ball is picked off right at the 44 yard line where the Hornets will take over. Yarborough had plenty of time. He just underthrew that route. He had Washington at the 40 and just didn't get enough air on it. Number 30 able to get in there and intercept the pass, and that'll bring Hugney right back to the line to set up his second drive. Hugney in the shotgun. He's looking deep to the left. His intended receiver is there. The pass is incomplete, intended for Miles Moore. Number two, Ben Williams in on the coverage for the Bishops. Let's go, D-line, get back there. Let's go, line, back up. Hugney's keeping the pedal on the metal here for the Hornets, keeping the offense moving. He was looking for a big play right there out of the gate. That will bring up second and 10 for Hugney. He fakes the handoff and goes straight up the middle. He's going to be gained about four or five yards on the play. He stopped at about the 47-yard line by the Bishop defense. They're going to give him a three-yard gain on the play. We'll call it third and seven for Hugney and the Hornets. Hugney in the shotgun, two receivers to his left, two to his right, and one back. Five fourteen remaining in the first quarter in a 7-7 game. And apparently the Hornets did not like the formation, what they saw, and there will be a timeout on the field. We'll take this timeout to recognize some of our sponsors for today's game. Taylor Financial Strategies located at 4020 Capital Drive in Rocky Mount. Also, BRAME Specialty. BRAME delivers products, services, and solutions to our customers throughout the Carolinas and Virginia. Founded in 1924, they remain family-owned and operated with a strong focus on the communities where we live and work. Our goal is to assist our customers in taking the next step to improve the appearance, health, and efficiency of our facility. That is BRAME Specialty. Also, this game brought to you in part by Pepsi. Everything's better with Pepsi and Piedmont Service Group, building efficiency and sustainability, 50 years of service and counting. After the timeout, Hugney will face a third and eight here in the shotgun. He has two receivers to both sides and Bird to his left in the running back position. 
on a third and eight here. Hugney looking to his right. Ball is thrown low. Waiting for an official signal, but it's incomplete. It appeared that Caleb Reedy had caught the ball, but they're saying it hit the ground first. And with that incomplete pass, the Hornets will be forced to punt it away. Good coverage there by the Bishops. Snap is up and the punt is off. Ball returned by number 15, Kevin Alford. Took a Hornet bounce, he scooped it up and brought it over to the right side and the Bishops will. So after both teams scoring on their opening possession, we have now had back-to-back -back defensive stops with 4.58 remaining in the first quarter and your score Bishop 7, Hornet 7. So we've seen two touchdowns and two defensive stops. We will see what now happens for the Bishops as Storm Yarbrough will look to recover from the interception. Jeff Black on the carry for the Bishops. He's over to the left side, maybe gaining two or three yards on the play. Black gaining two yards on the play. We'll call it second and eight for the Bishops with 435 remaining in quarter number one. Yarbrough in the shotgun. Receives the snap, looking to his right. Ball is tipped and nearly intercepted by number 43. Good job by the Hornet defensive line to get a hand in on Yarbrough's pass. Yarbrough was looking for his receiver on the right side. He cut back to the middle and just as he released the ball. It was tipped by the defensive line of the Hornets. And that will bring up third and eight now for Yarbrough and the Bishops. Yarbrough in the shotgun as the Hornet fans rise and he is going to complete the pass across midfield to number 15, Kevin Alford. Target so far this afternoon, Alford's gonna gain 17 yards easily, resulting in a Bishop first down. Ball will now be placed at the 45-yard line of the Bishops where they'll have first and 10. Just under four minutes remaining in quarter number one, still in a 7-7 tie. Yarbrough in the shotgun, receives a high snap. Ball. The ball goes to Jalen Perry, and he goes absolutely nowhere and is dropped beyond the, behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Good job by the Hornet defense. A loss of five yards by Perry on the carry. Bring up second and 15 now for the Bishops. Yarbrough in the shotgun. Another high snap. He's looking to the left. Short little pass. Is complete to Sincere Johnson, number 30, a freshman running back. Johnson was able to slip past the defense, and they're going to have an official timeout here. Booth on the tackle for the Hornets. There is a flag on the play. We'll wait to see what the result of the flag is. a holding penalty assessed to the Bishop, so that's going to negate any gain and back them up 10 yards. And the Bishops will now face a second and 19 situation from their own 35 yard line. 
Yarbrough in the shotgun facing second and 19. 250 remaining in quarter number one. Yarbrough changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He receives the snap. He's looking left, back to the right. He's now forced to the right, looking for a receiver. And he is going to be forced out of bounds near the 45 yard line. Yarbrough initially looking to his left, didn't find anybody, and then went to the center, nobody, and very well covered there by the Hornet defense as Yarbrough was not able to find a receiver, was forced into a rush. A great game there by Yarbrough. Picked up 10 yards on the play. He's been very good on his feet so far when he hasn't been able to pass. And this will now bring up third and nine with 2.11 to go in the first quarter. Yarbrough in the shotgun. High snap, looks to his left, passes up, and it is complete to number nine, Trey Blackwell. Blackwell is near the 30-yard line, a gain of 20 yards on the play, and will bring up another first down and 10 for the Bishops. The Hornet 34-yard line. Yarbrough very successful this feet and he's going to pitch play there that play snuffed out easily by the Hornet number one. Still with your score, Bishop seven, Hornet seven. Beautiful afternoon, sunny afternoon here in Rocky Mount. And great to see the Bishops being able to play their home games on campus. It's the second year they've been able to do that, and I know they're happy about that for this program. Yarborough takes a snap. He's looking across midfield, doesn't see anything, goes to the left, then unloads. Pass is complete to number 22, Chase Corey. And that will be another Bishop first down. That will be first and goal for the Bishops. Yarbrough give credit to this offensive line. They have worked hard and given Yarbrough plenty of opportunity to throw the football and find his receivers. Chase Corey on the reception. Have a first and ten. Another high snap there. The ball pitched this time to number 28, Jalen Perry. This may be something that the Bishops want to address here in the first quarter. There's been a lot of high snaps. And that will end quarter number one. We've played 15 minutes so far with the Bishops of Westland, seven. The Hornets of Shenandoah, seven. We will step aside and take this break. You're watching North Carolina Wesleyan football on WHIG-TV. We'll be right back. All right, you can bring me back. Three, two, one. 
Opening quarter number two here. Yarbrough with the snap, looking to his left. And that pass is complete. Touchdown pass to number 15, Kevin Alford. A senior from Charlotte, North Carolina in on the reception. And with the very first play of the second quarter, Yarbrough and the Bishops strike for another touchdown. So take the lead for the second time here in the first half. Noela in to kick the extra point for the Bishops. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. <coughs> and with 14.56 remaining in the second quarter, Bishops 14 and the Hornets 7. And we will take another break here on the North Carolina Wesleyan game of the week here on WHIG TV. Go ahead and bring it. Three, two, one. 14.56 remaining in the first half. Bishops just retake the lead on their last possession with a touchdown. And now we'll see if the Hornets are able to respond. The kickoff is returned near the 40 line. Position for the Hornets to start this drive. One of our sponsors of today's financial strategies, located at 420 Capital Drive in Rocky Mount. Also, Pepsi. Everything's better with Pepsi. Garland. He has absolutely nowhere to go. The line and will lose four yards on the play, bring up second and 14. Hug me in the shotgun again with a second and 13, just over 14 minutes to go. He is going to hand the ball off once again to Garlic. Garlic was not making room there. Tried to cut over to the left side, and the Bishop is there once again. He may have gained one yard. 11 for Hugney and the Hornets. 13.41 remaining in the first half. Hugging in the shotgun, receives a snap. He is looking to the left. An incomplete. They will catch three. Ethan Bigby, but he caught the ball out of bounds. And the Bishop defense immediately holding after the go-ahead touchdown. And the Hornets will face a three-and-out situation and will have to Kevin Alford deep to receive. The snap is fumbled, but he is able to get it away. And the ball will at the 40, excuse me, the 37 yard line where the Bishops will take over. Remaining in the first half, 
Bishops 14, Hornets 7. Brain Specialty delivers product, services, and solution to our customers throughout the Carolina and Virginia. They remain family owned and operated with a strong where we live and work. Brain That's nearly intercepted by number 11 for the Hornets. It was intended for Trey Blackwell. Fortunate there for Yarbrough and the Bishops that he was not able to bring that in and we will now face second and 10. Yarbrough in the shotgun with a back to both sides. Two receivers to his right, another high snap. Time goes to number 30, Sincere Johnson. He's a freshman running back from... to his right, one now in motion. Yarbrough looking to his left, now back to the middle. Finds nothing, he's flushed out to the right. Yarbrough is gonna unload the ball downfield and it is complete to Sean Washington, but there is a flag on the long pass. We will see if this is coming back. And it is going to come back, holding on the bishops, which will negate the long pass from Arbro. That was one of those plays where you could probably tell that there was a little action going on. Yarbrough had all day to throw that football with no defenders anywhere in sight, and now we know why. 12.06 remaining in the half. Yarbrough will now face third and 22. Shotgun snap. Yarbrough is flushed out of the pocket. He is going to spin off and be sacked. Struggling to get back to the original line there. And Westland will now be forced to punt away the football. And for the second consecutive possession, they will punt it away. Chase Corey is on to punt the football for the Bishops. The Hornets with just one back to receive. Punt. Snap is up. Ball is caught near midfield, brought over to the right side, and he will be dropped at around the 46 yard. And the Hornets will now take over, looking to try to tie the game with 11.08 remaining in the first half. And the Bishops up 14 to 7. Hornet 40 yard line, first and 10. Hutton remains in the shotgun where he has stayed all day. Snaps up. The pass. It was intended for Caleb Reedy. Reedy well covered. The for the Hornets. Snap is... Number 24, Gary Garland. 
one there for Garlic. As the Bishop defense one in. Garlic gets back to the line of scrimmage. And for the Hawks. With about ten and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Steve Hugney in the shotgun. He receives a snap. Looking to his left. Ball is unloaded down the left side and it is bobbled and incomplete. Pass intended for Brett Butler. They had the ball unable to for the third consecutive possession. Now the Hornets play again to the bit. Snap is up. Punt is away, and Alford will call for a fair catch, and we'll receive it around the 10-yard line. And with 10-17 remaining in half, 14, Mendoa, 7. Ball will be placed at Wesleyan's 11-yard line. Yarbrough blank bringing his offense back to the field. High snap, ball pitched over to number 26. That is going to be Jeff Black on the carry. Not much doing there. Two yards on the play and it will be second and 10 for the Bishops. Just under 10 minutes remaining in the half. 14 to seven in favor of Wesleyan. Yarbrough in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, looks across mid. Freshman tied in Las Vegas. That is the second big gain. Center of the field is now at the find his big man cutting right down the first half. Yarbrough runs up to the line of scrimmage, resets the play. Takes the snap and is going to hand it off again to Black. <laughs> Not much doing. The play, we'll call it second and nine. With 8.48 remaining in the first half. Play. Bring up third and six for the Bishops. Nine yards. Yarbrough in the shotgun. Three receivers to the left. He's looking left. Pump fakes and unloads. Number 15, Kevin Alford. Alford is just across midfield, and it will be a 13-yard gain. And good for another Bishop first down as they move the chains. Just across midfield to the Hornet 49-yard line. Yarbrough, another high snap. The ball's pitched off. To number 28, Jalen Perry. And Perry fights for a couple of tough yards. He'll gain two on the play and will bring up second and eight now for the Bishops with 7-19 remaining in the first half.
Caleb Reedy in on the tackle for the Hornets. Yarbrough looking to the sideline here as the play clock down to 14. Bring play call to the line, remains in the shotgun. Yarbrough has taken every snap in the shotgun here so far today. That is definitely where he is comfortable. Another high snap, Yarbrough takes it over to the left side. He fakes and lunges forward for an additional couple of yards just across the 40 yard line. Extra effort there by Yarbrough to lunge forward and gain an additional two yards. He's still going to be short of the first down marker. It's going to be third and one at the 40 yard line of the Hornets. Ball handed off to Black, and he is not going to get there. A big defensive stand there for the Hornets. The decision will have to be made whether or not to go for it here. Try to decide what With 5.27 remaining in the first half, your score Bishops 14, Hornet 7, and we'll take that timeout as well. You're watching North Carolina Westland football on WHIG TV. You can't even hear. Huh? How long? Is this any better? That any better right here? Better? Okay. All right, you can go on and bring it back in three, two, one. And Yarborough and the Bishops facing a fourth and two. Snap is up, hand off to Black, and he is going to be dropped. And that is a big defensive stand for the Hornets. As the Bishop a play there, and they hand the ball off to Black, and he was not able to get the first down. And that will turn the ball over on downs to the Hornets. With 5.23 remaining in the first half, Bishop still clinging to a 14-7 lead. Hugney brings his offense back. He's looking to the right. Ball is thrown across. Number three, Ethan Bigby. Bigby down to the 35-yard line. A 27-yard gain on the pass and will certainly result in a Hornet first down. I'll be spotted at the 36. Hugney in the shotgun again. He looks over to the sideline for the call. 450 remaining in the first half, 14 to seven bishops. Hugney's handoff goes to Rashadine Bird. And Bird will gain six yards on the play and it'll be a 
training in the first half. And the Hornets look to try to tie things before halftime where they will receive the second half kick. Ball is handed off to Gary Garland. And nine yards on the play. Move the chains once again for the Hornets. Ball will be spotted at the 21 yard line where Hugney lines up in the shotgun again. Two receivers to his left, takes a snap, but he's going to pitch the ball off to Gary Garlic. And Garlic moves forward for some more positive yardage. Three eighteen remaining in the half. Low snap by Hugna. He's going to hand the ball off to Garlic. Garlic is into the end zone for the Hornets. Garlic was wrapped up near the line of scrimmage, was able to fight through several tackles, barreling his way into the end zone. And you can put six points on the board for the Hornets. And they are an extra point away from tying the game with 2.57 remaining. We do have an injured player on the field, and as they attend to the injured player, we will take a break as well on WHIG-TV's coverage of the North Carolina Wesleyan Game of the Week. Bring me on back. Three, two, one. And after the touchdown by number 24, Gary Garlic, the Hornets will line up and attempt the extra point, trying to tie the game. And the kick is up, and it is good. And with 2.57 remaining in the first half, Bishops 14 and Hornets 14. We'll take a look at some of our sponsors here. Taylor Financial Strategies, located at 4020 Capital Drive in Rocky Mount. Brain Specialty, delivering products, services, and solutions to our customers throughout the Carolinas and Virginia. They remain family owned and operated with a focus on the communities that they live and work. Our goal is to assist customers in taking the next step to improve the appearance, health, and efficiency of their facilities. Brain Specialty. Also, this game brought in part to you by Pepsi. Everything's better with a nice cold Pepsi. And Piedmont Service Group, building efficiency and sustainability with 50 years of service in County. Two fifty-seven remaining in the first half. The Hornets will be kicking off now to the Bishops. And the ball will roll into the end zone and result in a touchback. And the Bishops will set up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Uh, trying to see if they can answer the score from the Hornets. And put some points on and retake the lead here before the half concludes. 
First and 10 at the 25 as Storm Yarbrough will bring his offense back to the line. Ball is snapped, handed off to Black. And Jeff Black on the carry for the Bishops. Black gains five yards before he is pushed out of bounds. Second and five now, with two five remaining in the half. Yarbrough takes a snap, fakes a handoff, looks to the left, and goes back to the middle. No room whatsoever to operate, and he is dropped by a swarm of Hornet defenders. With 2.11 remaining in the half. Yarbrough in the shotgun calls for Washington in motion. Takes a snap, looks to the left, and the pass. He catches the ball at the 30 yard line, and it will move the. Just gone under the two minute mark here in the first half. Yarbrough receives the snap. He is a The pass to number 28, Jalen Perry. Perry continues to fight forward for yards. Great job by Yarbrough there. He was able to and found his receiver downfield and was able to complete it to Perry. Bishops. Yep. Ball handed off again to Perry. Number eight. Perry eludes several tackles. He's off to the left side. He will easily move the game toward the Bishop. On the play for. Perry. Bishops will try to stay in high gear. They want to continue some points up here and try to take the lead into the halftime. Off in the second half. Yarbrough receives a snap. He looks left, finds nothing, looks back to the center. Everyone's covered, and so he'll keep it himself. And Yarbrough will gain some yards out to the left side. And he's going to gain about 11 yards and good for another first down for the Bishops. 33 seconds remaining in the half. Ball will be at the 27-yard line. Yarbrough in the gun. Up, he's looking left, and we'll just throw it away to stop the clock. And the bishops will now have an opportunity to regroup. The pass was just thrown away as everyone was well covered. 26 seconds remaining on the clock. 14 to 14, your score. Yarbrough receives a snap in the shot. And Johnson is out of bounds after a short gain. Johnson's going to gain uh, four yards on the play. We'll bring up third and six with 19 seconds remaining in the half. Yarbrough in the shotgun. 
Ball to snap, he's looking to his left. Pass is complete to Sincere Johnson. And he is dropped before he can get out of bounds as the clock continues to run. And I believe that will, uh, there is a timeout called by the Bishops with one second remaining as they will decide whether or not to go for the field goal or the uh, fourth down conversion here. One second remaining in a tie game, 14 all. Bishop community still mourning the loss of one of their players from a couple of weeks ago in a tragic death. Ben Clemens uh, passed away here on campus during the first week of school. And the Bishop community continues to mourn that loss and they certainly continue to, to play in his honor. That's a tough thing for any program to have to deal with. Nolan Welloff will be called upon to try to attempt the field goal as the Bishops will look to take a field goal lead into the half. And before he is able to get the kick off, the Hornets call a timeout. I wanted to see what the formation was. So they will step off the field. As we mentioned, uh, tragic passing of uh, Clemens during the first week of school. He was found unresponsive in his dorm room and the campus students and many of the players had a candlelight visual the evening of his passing. And a lot of things have been done around the community in honor of Clemens and his family certainly been a tough couple of weeks for the Bishop football program. Well off in. This will be the final play of the first half. Snap is down. The kick by Welloff is up. And it is no good. That will end the first half of play here with your score, North Carolina Wesleyan Bishops 14, Shenandoah Hornets 14. We will be back for second half action here on the WHIG-TV North Carolina Wesleyan Game of the Week.
while. You already felt it. You gonna come with me? You come. Yeah. Alright, how do you, how are we hearing me now? Do you hear me at all? Are you hearing me at all right now? Any good, any good, any good. Alright, so is it bad enough that I should go back to the bleachers or do we want to try it here? So it's not, it's not that much worse than the bleachers. What are you thinking? Well, probably not because then I'd be all up in there. This is probably as far as I'm going to get because then, then I'd be all in their way. I might, I tell you what, I, all right, sounds good. I'm, I might have swag hold the box out and see if that helps. We'll try that. All right, so here's what I need. Does that make any difference now that the antenna is out? Is that, am I any clearer now with the antenna being out? Once it gets going. All right, you kind of keep an eye on her. If she ever if she ever gives an X signal, that means she's losing me. Like if you ever if you ever see her do this, so you just kind of keep looking at her and hold that. Um, my aunt I might have to go back to the bleachers anyway because I might not be able to see down here. So I, um, here, come here real quick. I'm going to start on these. Maybe if I'm on just a couple of these rows right here. Let's try right here. How's this right here? So far good, we'll wait until we see how the noise goes. All right. Tight, girl. Do what? Okay. See, the problem is if I stand here, I block people trying to watch though. Uh, do, do, do. Um, am I in your way now still? You're good? Okay. All right, Ant. Three, two, one. And welcome to the second half of WHIG TV's coverage of the Wesleyan Game of the Week. Entertaining first half, 14 to 14, as we move into half number two. The Hornets of Shenandoah will receive the kickoff to open half number two. Kick is up. Miles Moore on the return. He's out to the left. He's across the 20 
and will be forced out of bounds near the 25 yard line where the Hornets will set up their opening drive of half number two. Very mixed, good mixture of offense in half number one. Good defensive stops on both ends and two touchdowns by both teams. So no matter what you came to the game looking for, you got a little bit of, of everything here today so far. Steve Hugney will line up in the shotgun to open up the second half for the Hornets. He receives the snap. Pitch to number six, Brett Butler. And Butler gains just a couple of yards on the play. He's gonna gain two yards and to bring up second and eight for the Hornets. Hugney lines up in the shotgun, three receivers to his left. He receives a snap, looks out to his left pass, is complete to Pat Ritchie. Ritchie near the first down yard marker. We will see where he gets the spot. He will gain nine yards on the play, and it will be good for Hornet first down. Hugney in the shotgun with one back to his right. He's going to hand the ball off. Ball will go to Bird. Rashadine Bird on the carry for the Hornets. He gained six yards on the play. And will bring up second and four for the Hornets. Hornets looking to attack quick. They move up to the line of scrimmage, moving the offense along quickly. Hugney on the handoff, goes to Bird once again. Bird is going to gain 11 yards on the play and it will be good for another first down for the Hornets. They have come out very aggressive here and they're not standing over the ball very long as well. They want to keep this offense moving, keep that Westland defense on their toes Ball is handed off to Bird again. He fights for maybe a yard or two on this play. As obviously Hornets have come out of the second half gate, ready to roll. They don't want to give this Wesleyan defense any time to relax and get in any type of set here. Hugney in the shotgun again. Takes the low snap and hands off to Bird again. Bird up the middle, fights for a couple of tough yards. He gains about three on the play. We'll call it third and five as big, big play here with 12.06 remaining in the third quarter. Hugney in the shotgun. Hugney receives a snap and he will hand it off again to Bird. Bird with a 13 yard gain on the play. And this will be the third consecutive first down for the Hornets on this drive. As they have come out with a big offensive mindset. The Wesleyan defense now on its heels, trying to slow down Hugney in this Hornet offense. First and 10 at the 25, 11.35 remaining. Hugney looks to his right, calls out Garlic exchanges some words with Garlic. Garlic moves to the left. Hugney gets the snap, looks left, fires, and the pass is complete to running back Pat Ritchie, number eight, and he is forced out of bounds to the left side. Ritchie gains about seven yards on the play. We'll call it second and two, perhaps. He gave him eight. Just over 11 minutes remaining in the game. Hugney in the third quarter, excuse me. Hugney receives the snap, looks to his right, tucks it in over to the right side. The pass is incomplete. It was attended for Ethan Bigby. And we'll 
will bring up third and two for the Hornets. game being played today on the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on our country. A lot of emotion for all the fans. Handoff to number 22, Rayshad Dean Bird. Big gain on the play for Bird. Bird is inside the five yard line and it will bring First and goal now for the Hornets inside the five yard line. And the Wesleyan defense stands up to Bird. Bird is unable to get the last yard there. We'll bring up second and goal now for the Hornets. Beginning of this half, very similar to what we saw in half number one, where both teams were able to score on their opening possessions. And will we see the same thing here in half number two? Pitch over to the left side to Bird. And he has stopped short again. It will be a short loss on the play, and for the second consecutive play, the Bishop's defense has stood tall at the one-yard line. It is now third and two, and that brings the Bishop fans to their feet here as they're looking for another big goal line stand here. Third and two, 9.28 remaining. The handoff to Bird. Bird is stopped again for the third consecutive time. The Hornets had it first and goal at the one yard line and on three consecutive plays were not able to move a yard. An incredible stand by the Wesleyan defense here. And we are at the 8.58 mark of the third quarter and after having it first and goal at the one, the Hornets will go for a field goal here and the kick is up and it is good. And with 8.48 remaining in the third quarter, your score, Hornets 17, Bishops 14. Not the result that the Hornets were looking for. They moved the ball nearly 80 yards on that opening possession of the second half had a first and goal all the way at the one yard line and only came out with three points. We will see later on in the game if that ultimately comes back to haunt them, which is quite possible as tight as this game looks and appears to be with 848 remaining in the third quarter. Some of our sponsors of the game, Taylor Financial Strategies at 4020 Capital Drive in Rocky Mount, also Brame Specialty delivering products, services, and solutions to our customers. We remain family owned and operated with a strong focus on the communities where we live and work. Also, Pepsi is one of our sponsors of today's game. Remember, everything's better with Pepsi. This game also brought to you in part by Piedmont Service Group, building efficiency and sustainability with 50 years of service and counting. A kickoff will be received by number 15, Kevin Alford. Alford breaks free. He's across midfield and will set the Bishops up with incredible field position. He had some daylight there and found a hole and got it just across midfield so the Bishops will set up in Hornet territory to open their first drive of the second half. Yarbrough in the shotgun. Another high snap. He will hand the ball off once again to Jeff Black. Not much doing there on the opening carry for Black. The snaps continue to be high for 
Yarbrough to handle. Now that was something they might would have worked on during half, but in the very opening snap of the second half, they had to jump for it. Second and seven, he was able to, to gain three yards on the play. Snap to Arbor. He fakes, and he is going to carry the ball again in about five yards on the play. Yarbro appeared to almost fumble the football, then did some kind of little trickery maneuver, like he was going to pass it behind his back or something, and then tucked it and ran. And they're going to say he gained about four yards on the play, and will bring up third and three here for the Bishops as they try to answer the field goal by the Hornets. The snap is up and Yarbrough will be sacked. They will be dropped near midfield. And Westland will be forced to punt the football away with just over seven minutes remaining. <laughs> West then will have to punt it away here. Fourth and eight, the snap is up. And the punt is up. And it is fumbled. But recover, oh, and Wesleyan saying they have the football. And we are waiting for an official word here from the ref. But I believe that the Hornets have retained possession. Nothing wrong with a little extra coercion there. And the Hornets will now set up their second possession here of the second half. 6.42 remaining in the third quarter. Hugney receives the snap and he will keep the ball. He's forced to his left and he is popped. A heavy hit on the sideline that gets the Wesleyan bench excited. You could just hear the major contact there. Uh, perhaps that'll take a big hit to get these teams going. Hugney was still able to gain five on the play and they will have second and five. Hugney snaps and keeps the ball. He fights up the middle and he will gain about nine yards and will move the chains once again for the Hornets resulting in yet another first down. Six ten remaining in the third quarter. Hug me in the shotgun. Receives a snap. He's looking out to his left. Pass is intercepted by the bishop. Corey Hunter on the interception for the Bishops and they will now take over deep in Shenandoah Hornet territory. It's a great response by the Bishop defense. Yarbrough Takes a snap, he's right back on the field. He's looking across the middle of the field and that pass is complete to his tight end, Dylan Wright. Good for a 12 yard gain and it will move the chains for the Bishops, resulting in another first down. It will be first and 10 at the Hornet 19 yard line with 530 remaining in the third quarter. Yarbrough in the shotgun, receives the snap, fakes the handoff, looks to his right, passes intercepted by number 11 
for the Hornets. And just when the Wesleyan defense had an interception, the Hornets step up and on the very next play, intercept the ball and now the Hornets will retake over possession of the football. Good response there by the Hornet defense there to respond now. They, they are pinned inside their own five yard line there. Hugney will take the snap and hand the ball off. Bird on the carry, not much doing there. Got to be careful here with pinned inside your own five yard line. Actually did gain one yard on the play to bring up second and nine. Me on the keeper is going to be dropped after a short game. We'll bring up third and nine now for the Hornets with 442 remaining in the third quarter. Hornets clinging to a 17 to 14 lead here at Bishop Stadium on the campus of North Carolina Wesleyan College. Pass intended for Brett Butler. Zach Mathis is now in at quarterback for the Hornets. And they will now be forced to punt deep in their own territory. Four twenty-seven remaining in the third. Punt is up, it is a wobbly kick out to the right side. And we'll take a Hornet bounce, but the Bishops will set up in great field position. And with 421 remaining in the third quarter, your score Hornet 17, Bishops 14. So after the opening drive here in half number two where the Hornets marched 82 yards and scored, we have seen three consecutive defensive stops, two interceptions and a three and out. And now Wesleyan will have the ball at the Hornet 26 yard line to start their next drive. We'll see if they can recover from the Yarbrough interception. Yarbrough in the shotgun. Snap, and the ball is handed off to number 26. That'll be Jeff Black on the carry. Black fights for a tough yard, and it will bring up second and nine. And we have an injured player on the field. Officials will call a timeout. This will give us an opportunity to run down some of today's sponsors. Taylor Financial Strategies located at 4020 Capital Drive in Rocky Mount. Also, Brame Specialty delivering product, services, and solutions to customers throughout the Carolinas and Virginia. They remain family owned and operated with a strong focus on communities. Our goal is to assist customers in taking the next step to improve the appearance, health, and efficiency of their facilities. Also, this game brought to you in part by Pepsi. Everything's better with an ice cold Pepsi. Yarbrough in the shotgun, a back to each side, takes the snap, fakes, looks across the middle, the pass is complete to Trey Blackwell. Blackwell is inside the five yard line, it'll be good for another Wesleyan first down, first and goal at the two yard line. We'll see if the Bishops can punch it in You'll remember last possession, the Hornets had it first and goal at the one and had to settle for a field goal. 
We'll see if the Bishops can punch it in the end zone here. A handoff to number 28, Jalen Perry. And Perry has stopped short of the goal line. 3.15 remaining in the third quarter. No gain there for Perry. It will now be second and goal at the two-yard line for the Bishops. See if the Hornet defense can hold as the Westland goal line defense did. Yarborough in the shotgun takes a high snap. He's looking to the right, back across the middle. The pass is complete to Kevin Alford, and it is good for a touchdown for the Bishops. Alford's extra effort gets him across the goal line, and the Bishops have retaken the lead with 2.47 remaining in the third quarter and they await the extra point. And the kick is up and it is good. And with 2.47 remaining in the third quarter, your score Wesleyan 21, Shenandoah 17. We'll take a timeout here on the North Carolina Wesleyan Game of the Week on WHIG TV. Did you ask Arthur to come? He, he's just turned into a complete sack. Like I actually worry about him. Like he he doesn't even he just he doesn't even want to do anything. <laughs> Sitting at home. I'm saying he's just. All right, you can bring us back. Three, two, one. The kickoff is up, and it is received by number one, Miles Moore. Moore is across the 25-yard line, and Moore will return the ball to the 25-yard line. Miles Moore, no relation to Tequavius Moore. and the ball will be spotted at the 24-yard line. For those of you that watch our morning show, you will appreciate that last reference. Zach Math Mathis still in at quarterback for the Hornets. The ball will be handed off again to Rashadine Bird. gain five yards on the play and it'll be second and five. Mathis hands the ball off again. And 25 on the carry for the Hornets. Gains three yards on the play to bring up third and two now for the Hornets as they try to answer One forty-five remaining in the third quarter. And there will be a timeout on the field and we will take it with the players as well. We'll be right back on the North Carolina Wesleyan Game of the Week here on WHIG TV. You you can just go tell go tell them I, we need some more water. If y'all want to go, the guy that just gave me a fist bump. If you go, did you see him? Okay. How was your practice? Oh, really?
Okay. Go. Just see. Hey, ask him. Ask him if there's any chance that we could get like a Chick Fil A sandwich and some water and gator. Just if 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 he can't do the sandwiches, it's fine. But just just ask him if we can get a couple chicken sandwiches and some Gatorade. That I that y'all are helping me and it's just because I'm in people's way. Three, two, one. Mathis receives the snap, and the ball is handed off to Rock Shadeen Bird. Bird on the extra effort will carry the ball for four yards, and it will result in a horn first down. We have 127 remaining in the third quarter. And while they treat this injury, we will step aside once again and be right back on the North Carolina Wesleyan WHIG TV Game of the Week. Back, three, two, one. Mathis hands the ball off. Heron on the carry. He will be near the first down yard marker. Gain of about seven on the play. Mathis hands the ball off to Bird again. And he will gain 11 yards and move the chains once again for the Hornets. We're just at the one minute mark remaining in the third quarter with the Bishops clinging to a 21 to 17 lead. Mathis receives the snap, hands the ball off. And the Wesleyan defense stands tall. One yard loss on the play. It will bring up now second and 11 as a much needed cloud passes by the sun. <laughs> Gives us a little temporary shade here with 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Zach Matha still in at quarterback for the Hornets. Receives the snap, looks to the left. The pass is We're waiting to see what the call is. That is a complete pass. Pass completed to Miles Moore. Bring up third and seven. And that will be the final play of the third quarter as time has expired. And at the end of the third quarter, your score, Bishop 21, Hornets 17. And we will take a timeout here on the WHIG TV North Carolina Wesleyan Game of the Week. Thank you. I'll probably be burned after this. Uh, 
All right, we'll bring us back. Three, two, one. And we are about to open play in the fourth quarter here with Wesleyan into a 21 to 17 lead. The Hornets going. Mathis in the shotgun receives the snap. He looks across the middle and the pass is complete to Gary Garlic. Garlic near the first down yard marker, but there are flags on the play. We will wait to sort out the flags. Garlic lunging for the first down yard marker. Appeared to be a little bit short, but we'll wait and see what the result of this flag is. It appears like it's gonna be on the Hornets, and it is. And that will back them up 10 yards as they are ch charged with a holding penalty. We'll make it third and 12 for the Hornets. 14.55 remaining in the game. Mathis and at quarterback receives the snap. Hay fires deep to the right side and it is caught. Number two, Caleb Reedy on the completion. Mathis, great job by his offensive line, giving him the opportunity to look down the field and see a streaking Caleb Reedy. Reedy goes up all the way is able to jump up and receive that pass and a long game. That'll get the ball all the way down to the side. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his left and he will be dropped by a couple of Wesleyan quite sure what happened to starting quarterback Steve Hugney. They're just trying to mix things up a little. But Mathis remains in at quarterback for the Hornets. He's in the shotgun with a receiver to his left. He is going to hand the ball, fake the handoff, and keep it himself. And he is met again at will bring up third and long, third and about 11 for the Hornets at the Westland seven. Thirteen, twelve remaining in the game. Mathis in the shotgun, trying to retake the lead here. The ball. Thomas, he may have gained a few yards and it is not enough for the first down and it appears that the field goal unit will be coming on for the Hornets as they will attempt to kick their second field goal of the second half. Snap it down, the kick is up and it is good. And with 12.29 remaining in the game, that field goal draws the Hornets to within one. Wesleyan 21, Shenandoah 20. We'll step aside for another break here on the Wesleyan WHIG TV Game of the Week. You still going to Mudcats? Okay. Anybody going? Some people said they're still checking to see if they're. Are you just going by yourself? Huh? But you think some people are going?
12-29 remaining in the game. Hornets just a field goal to cut the lead to one. Kevin Alford on the return for the Bishops. He is across the 20-yard line where the Bishops will set up in their offensive drive. Storm Yarbrough, sophomore quarterback, returns. He is looking across the middle of the field, doesn't see anything. He's flushed and sacked. Yarbrough initially was looking downfield for Sean Washington. Washington was well covered by the corners of the Hornets, and Yarbrough eventually sacked for a six-yard loss on the play. That'll bring up second and 16 for the Bishops. Yarbrough in the shotgun. He receives the snap. He's looking to his left. And he is flushed out of the pocket and brought down near the 30-yard line after a short gain on the play. In the game with the Bishops clinging to a 21 to 20 lead. Now third and nine for Yarbrough and his offense. Receives a high snap, looking to his right. He is forced out of the pocket once again to his left. There's a flag on the play. I believe the ball is intercepted. It is intercepted by number 11. That is his second interception of the second half. There is a flag on the play. But it will be against the Bishops, but it will be declined and the ball is turned over to the Hornets and they will take over <coughs> in Bishop territory. It will be first and 10 with 11.08 remaining in the game. It will be at the Wesleyan 44 yard line. Mathis remains in at quarterback. Mathis is flushed to his left, looking over to the left side, and he has got a pass complete to number 23, Bird, 22 Bird. Bird will gain four yards on the play. Going to bring up second and six now for the Hornets. 10.47 remaining in the game with the Bishops clinging to a 21 to 20 lead. Looks like we're in for a great finish here. Mathis in the shotgun. He's got a receiver to in the backfield. Snap Mathis and he will fall off to Bird. Bird is the first down yard marker. Gain of seven on the play and will result in another first down for the Hornets. <laughs> Definitely in need of a defensive stop here. Three interceptions by Yarbrough on the day. Mathis hands the ball off to Bird again. Bird will gain about four or five on the play. And right now that stands as the difference in this football game as Storm Yarbrough has thrown three interceptions. And he is over on the sideline right now figuring things out with his coaches.
Three yard gain on the play, bring up third and two with 9.20 remaining in the game. Still 21 to 20 in favor of the Bishops. Mathis hands the ball off to Bird. Bird is scampering across the center, cuts back to the left. He will gain about 11 yards on the play and that will result in another first down for the Hornets. And there will be a timeout on the field as Wesleyan tries to regroup their reeling defense. And we will take that timeout with them with 9.03 remaining in the game. And your score, Bishops 21, Hornets 20. y'all do at practice? Uh, How you feel? You need to stretch today. Has anybody given you any indication they might come? Uh, three, two, one. We're back. 903 remaining in the game. Mac. First and 10 at the 15. Mathis looks to the middle of the field and throws his receiver, number two, Caleb Reedy. And he was covered by number two. Williams, a sophomore. Second and 10 with 8.58 remaining. Mathis hands the ball off to Bird. Bird is up the middle for a short game. Third and six now with 8.40 remaining in the game. Mathis looking to the right, he fires across the line. It is incomplete, but there is a flag on the play. And we will wait for the official call. Ben Williams on the coverage. You gotta love the passion of the fans in the stands. And that will result in a first and goal from the three yard line. Hornets takes the snap. Hands the ball off to Bird, and Bird is short of the goal line. The last time the Hornets were on the one-yard line, the Wesleyan defense stood tall and held them on three straight plays. Can the Bishop defense do it again? Second and goal at the one, Mathis hands it off to Bird. Bird is fighting for more yards and is going to be stopped again. Give credit to this Wesleyan goal line defense. As for the second consecutive time they have faced this scenario, that is five straight plays. They have held the Hornets at the goal line. Can they do it again on third and nine? Mathis hands off the bird. He is dropped. For the sixth consecutive play run, 
the Hornets are unable to go one yard in six consecutive plays from their one yard. An incredible job by the Wesleyan defense to hold them to another field goal attempt. This field goal attempt would give the Hornets the lead if they can knock it in. The kick is up, and it is good. And with 48 remaining in the game, your score, Hornets 23, Bishops 21. The Bishops have got to be a little bit frustrated here. They have literally held the Hornets to three field goals with two incredible goal line stands in this second. Find themselves trailing with 6.50 to go in the game. You got to be happy with this defense. As we mentioned, the defense has done an incredible job. But they actually find themselves down by two with 6.50 remaining in the game. As we are bracing ourselves for a furious finish here on the campus of North Unbelievable job by the Bishop's goal line defense. And the kick will be up. Received by Alford. Alford looking for space across the middle of the field and he will bring it near the 40 yard line to about the 38 where the Bishops will set up. We got a little extracurricular activity here. And this is the time of the game where things are starting to get a little bit chippy. And good job by the officials for getting in there and making sure nothing happens. And we can play this out without incident. Be first and 10 for the Bishops at their own 37 yard line. 6.45 remaining in the game. Yarbrough and the shotgun takes the snap, looks to his left, fires, and it is caught by number one, Sean Washington. Great job there by Yarbrough as he could feel the defender coming to his right side. He stayed poised, stayed in the pocket, and was able to fire a strike to Sean Washington for a 19-yard gain and a Bishop first down at midfield. It's now first and 10 from the 50 with 6.15 remaining. Hornets up 23-21 over the Bishops. Yarbrough looking across the middle. It is intercepted by the Hornets. Number two, Caleb Reedy on the interception. And for the fourth time today, Yarbrough is intercepted. He didn't seem to get much at all on that pass. It just kind of floated on him. I was just sitting up there for Reedy to intercept. And Yarbrough will take it over to the sideline and try to regroup. That is his fourth interception of the afternoon. Which normally spells doom for your team if your quarterback has thrown four interceptions. But even with five minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the game, the Bishops find themselves only down by two points. So if the defense can hold here, they will still at least have one more opportunity to get on the board and take the lead and win this game. Very important for Yarbrough and the offense to stay focused because most likely they will be getting another shot here. 
Mathis hands the ball off to Bird again. Bird fights for four tough yards. The interesting question will be if Westland is able to get the football back, do you dare change quarterbacks for the final possession, knowing that your starter has thrown four interceptions? may have a little bit of shake and confidence. We will see what Coach Flip decides to do. We have a third and three here with 4.45 remaining. Big call for the Wesleyan defense here. The snap and the handoff goes to Bird. And Bird is not going to get to the first down yard marker. He is going to gain a yard, but will still be two yards short. And will face a fourth and two from the 43 yard line. Interesting decision here for the Hornets. Do they, they are gonna stay out on the field and go for this on fourth and two. 15 seconds left on the play clock. Will they just try to draw Wesleyan offside or will they snap it? They've done two deeps. So far, Wesleyan has not fallen for it and they will take a delay of game penalty and punt the football away, hoping to pin Wesleyan deep in their own territory with 358 remaining in this game and the Hornets clinging to a 23-21 lead. And as both benches discuss strategy, it will give us an opportunity to go over today's sponsors. This game brought to you by Taylor Financial Strategies, located at 4020 Capital Drive in Rocky Mount. Brame Specialty, delivering products, services, and solutions to customers throughout the Carolinas and Virginia. They remain family owned and operated with a focus on communities that they live and work in. Their goal is to assist customers in taking the next step to improve the appearance, health, and efficiency of all facilities. Game brought to you also in part by Pepsi. Everything's better with an ice cold Pepsi. And Piedmont Service Group, building efficiency and sustainability. Piedmont Service, 50 years of service and counting. Three fifty-eight remaining in the game. And it looks like now that the Hornets have decided to go for it on fourth and two. The snap and the handoff to Bird. And the extra effort. The Hornets are saying they got it. We'll see where the ball is spotted. And it is a first down for the Hornets. He gained the two yards that he needed. And there are 3.45 remaining in the game, and that is a big blow to Wesleyan, as now the Hornets will keep their possession alive and also be able to burn off more clock. Hand off once again to this time to Gary Garlic. Garlic gains one yard on the play to bring up a second and nine. At this point, the Hornets are just looking to be patient, burn some clock, uh, just be efficient with their offense. They want this clock to run out. Of course, they want to score, but right now, the clock is their friend, and it is the Bishop's enemy. 2.50 remaining in the game. Second and nine from the 41. Snap, pitch to Gary Garlick again. He is dropped behind the original line of scrimmage. He will lose two yards on the play and that is gonna bring up third and 11. In case you're wondering, the Bishops still do have two timeouts. With one. And there is 2.40 remaining as we take a timeout. Be third and 11 now for the Hornets. And we will step aside. 
here on the North Carolina Westland Game of the Week on WHIG TV. Lady Fern. Ah, you can bring us back in three, two, one. And 240 remaining in the game. Third and 11 for the Hornets. Big defensive possession here for Wesleyan. The snap. The pass is deep and it is complete to number six, Brent Butler. A beautiful design play by Zach Mathis. Coming out of the timeout, he will gain 30 yards on the play and it will be good for a Hornet first down. Two twenty remaining in the game. First and 10 for the Hornets and that has taken a lot of the energy and faithful here at their sideline. The Bishops can only stop the clock one more time in this game. Mathis gets the snap and will hand the ball off to Bird. Bird with a short gain on the play. Wesleyan not using their timeout yet. At some point they will have to try to stop the clock here. It is now second and goal at the eight. And the Hornets definitely content to burning out as much of the clock as they possibly can. We're down to 123 remaining in the game. Mathis receives the snap, hands the ball off to Bird. Bird is waiting for the official call. Bird is down to the one yard line. It'll be third and goal from the one with 55 seconds remaining. And we now have a timeout called by the Bishops. 57 seconds remaining in the game. And we will take our final timeout here on the North Carolina Wesleyan Game of the Week with the score Hornets 23, Bishops 21. I think your boys have blown it, Doc. Where's all, where's all the people you know, Doc? Hurricane hockey starts in about two weeks. All right, bring us back in three, two, and one. 57 seconds remaining in the game. Third and goal from the one for the Hornets. Mathis hands the ball off to Bird and he is into the end zone. And that will pretty much ice things here as now the Hornets have a 29 to 21 lead. At this point, Wesleyan needs to try really hard to block the extra point and at least keep themselves within a touchdown and two point conversion. The snap is up and it is good. And with 53 seconds remaining, 
that will pretty much do it as the Hornets take a 30 to 21 lead. Taylor Financial Strategies, located at 4020 Capital Drive in Rocky Mount, one of our sponsors. Also the Piedmont Service Group, building efficiency and sustainability, 50 years of service and counting. Pepsi, everything's better with Pepsi and Brame Specialty. Our goal is to assist our customers in the efficiency of their facility. As Wesleyan looks back on this game, a lot of good things two goal line stands from the one yard line where their defense held six times, keeping the Hornets out of the end zone. But they were just unable to muster up enough offense. And unfortunately, they will have to look back to the four interceptions thrown by quarterback Storm Yarbrough as a big difference in this game. Sean Washington on the return for the Bishops. Forty-eight seconds remaining in the game. And freshman quarterback Alexander Stack will take the final snaps for the Bishops. Back in at quarterback. Stack's pass is intended for Sean Washington and it is incomplete. 43 seconds remaining in the game. Stack will get some reps. He is a quarterback from Smyrna, Georgia. Six foot seven and a lefty. Smyrna is basically right where the Atlanta Braves have put their new stadium. Stack eludes a tackle and he's looking out to the center and it is intercepted. And that will be the fifth interception thrown by a Wesleyan quarterback today. And it is all over but the singing. As that will send the Wesleyan faithful to their cars. And we should just have a snap and a meal out. And that should end things here. Coach Flipkowski will certainly have a lot to look at and a lot to work on with his squad. A lot of missed opportunities. Good things mixed in there, but ultimately they will have to look back at the five interceptions thrown by their quarterbacks here today. Let's go. Let's go, and that will be the final play from scrimmage. Your final score tonight, or this afternoon, Shenandoah 30, North Carolina Wesleyan 21. You've been watching the North Carolina Wesleyan Game of the Week on WHIG-TV.